Hi everyone, this is Dr. Udwak Neuro Academy. Today we'll be talking about the direct and the indirect pathway of the basal ganglia. But before we go straight into the business of the day, let us remind ourselves of, of what basal ganglia is. Basal ganglia is a cluster of neurons in the brain. The nuclei are clusters of cell bodies. They are usually implicated in controlling movement and also in motor learning. The four major components of basal ganglia are the striatum, the globus pallidus, the subthalamic locus, and the substantia nigra. The striatum is the largest part of the basal ganglia. It consists of two connected clusters of cell bodies. They are the caudic nucleus and the putamen, which are separated by a fiber tract. The globus pallidus is a single cluster of cell bodies. It is made up of the internal globus pallidus, which is also known as the globus pallidus internus, and the external globus pallidus, which is also known as the globus pallidus externus. The cells in the globus pallidus are actually in a bit in nature. The subthalamic nucleus are mainly excitatory in nature. The, sub the substantia nigra is named black substance because of its high level of melanin. It consists of two parts, namely the substantia nigra pars compacta and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. The input unit of the basal ganglia is the striatum, which receives innervation from the entire cerebral cortex, the thalamus, and the limbic system. The output units are the substantia nigra pars reticularis and the internal globus pallidus, which projects to the thalamus and in turn projects to the cortex, forming a loop. The classic model of the connections between the nuclei in the basal ganglia is actually the direct and the indirect pathway model. In this model, there are two important pathways of connection between the nuclei. They are the direct and the indirect pathway. The overall effect of the direct pathway is to stimulate the cortex. The cortex provides excitatory inputs to the striatum, which then provides inhibitory outputs directly to the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. These then provide inhibitory inputs to the thalamus, which has excitatory connections back to the cortex. If the direct pathway is stimulated, the striatum is excited, increasing its inhibition of the internal globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. If these nuclei are inhibited, their output is reduced. This means they are less able to inhibit the thalamus and the thalamic output reaches the cortex and excites the cortical neurons. The overall effect of the indirect pathway is the opposite of the direct pathway, which is the inhibition of the cortex. The indirect pathway takes a longer and an indirect route from the striatum to the internal globus pallidus and the substantial nigra pars reticularis by going through the external globus pallidus and the subthalamic nuclei. In the indirect pathway, the striatum still receive excitatory inputs from the cortex. However, the striatum then sends inhibitory projections to the external globus pallidus. The external globus pallidus then sends inhibitory connections to the subthalamic nucleus and the subthalamic nucleus sends excitatory inputs to the substantia nigra pars reticularis and the internal globus pallidus. These again inhibit the thalamus, which sends excitatory inputs to the cortex. When the indirect pathway is stimulated, the cortex excites the striatum. The striatum then inhibits the external globus pallidus. When the nucleus in the external globus pallidus are inhibited, they are less able to inhibit the neurons of the sub subthalamic nucleus. These enable the subthalamic nucleus to excite the substantia nigra pars reticularis and allows it to inhibit the thalamus, thus preventing it from exciting the cortex. The balance of the activity between the direct and the indirect pathway is modulated by dopamine. The substantia nigra pars compacta contains neurons which uses dopamine as their neurotransmitter. This neuron projects to the striatum. The cells of the direct pathway has D1 dopamine receptors. When dopamine binds to these receptors, it excites the neurons 
making them more likely to fire. Dopamine, therefore, increases the activity of the direct pathway. In contrast, cells of the indirect pathway have D2 dopamine receptors. When dopamine binds to these receptors, it inhibits the neuron, making it less likely to fire. Dopamine, therefore, decreases the activity of the indirect pathway. The direct and the indirect pathway model has been most successfully applied to the control of movement. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and hit the share button.